Baldur's Gate 3 is taking the internet by storm. At its peak, a whopping 800,000 plus concurrent players were playing this weekend, catapulting it to the number eight most played of all time spot. The gaming community has sung its praises and it's incredibly refreshing to play a feature complete game of this caliber on day one. But AAA game developers want you to know that this is rockstar level nonsense for scope, that it's foolhardy to set expectations higher, and Baldur's Gate 3 should not be used as a raised standard to RPGs going forward. Why was the first response to defend the current state of AAA gaming as opposed to saying, hey, maybe we can learn a thing or two from Baldur's Gate 3 and make our game better for our customers? This all kicked off way back on July 8th, a lifetime ago by internet standards, I know, when a writer and BAFTA nominee, Xavier Nelson, took to Twitter to express concerns about Baldur's Gate 3, namely that fans would use Baldur's Gate 3 to apply criticism or a raised standard to RPGs going forward. My rebuttal is, why shouldn't customers have raised standards? Taking it a step further, why shouldn't some AAA developers raise their own standards? Are we really going to pretend that consumers shouldn't be a little upset right now and hoping for an improvement in the industry going forward? Rockstar just announced a $50 remake, I'm sorry, conversion of the original Red Dead Redemption for the PlayStation 4 and Switch that has no mention of a 4K update, no mention of 60 FPS, and no mention of multiplayer support. The game came out 13 years ago and the Xbox port does everything they're offering and then some for free with your 360 copy. Go buy a brand new copy of the Game of the Year edition on Amazon right now for $30 and you're good to go. Star Wars Jedi Survivor, when released on PC, had furious fans citing numerous problems getting the game to run, frequent crashes, and similar problems on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox. EA apologized and is still working to fix the issues. Destiny 2 just released a state of the game blog saying, amongst other things, that they don't have the resources to release new ritual armor every season. But that same studio manages to create new armor sets in the shop for up to $20 a pop without fail every season. Diablo 4 unabashedly has several character skins priced at $20 each and just released their first season that had a patch that was so poorly thought out that the developers had to have an emergency live stream to apologize and have since begun working to revert those changes. We don't plan on doing a patch like this ever again. Okay, you need a more comparable RPG example of why fans are heralding Baldur's Gate 3 as a breath of fresh air? Look no further than Mass Effect Andromeda, which was widely panned. Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with everything or cyberpunk 2077 that made promises about last gen game consoles that it couldn't keep it took cdpr almost a year to get that all sorted out i'll make this as clear as possible to contextualize how fans are feeling it feels like money has become more important than the core experience for fans that's why elden ring Baldur's Gate 3 and even The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom are being widely celebrated. So what is up with the excuses? A game came along that is amazing, is selling well, is being praised by developers and fans alike, and the response is, well, we can't do that. Well, sweet, if that doesn't get me hyped for Mass Effect 4, I don't know what will. Xavier's tweet was well-intentioned and he went on to add a lot of important context, but I think it misses the perspective of the consumer. We don't know anything about game design or how hard it is. We just know that Destiny is deleting hundreds of dollars worth of expansions when they feel like it, that Diablo is constantly reminding us to buy skins in their store, and most PC ports have been abysmal lately. Remember, that tweet was made nearly a month before Baldur's Gate 3 blew up, and it was still contentious with fans speaking up about their frustrations and developers chiming in to say what felt like, game development is hard, you don't get it, be quiet. Baldur's Gate 3 is a game from a large passionate studio that refuses to add microtransactions, gave players early access so they could address any problems that arose before launch, and is taking Steam charts by storm. So why should fans not use that as a gold standard of how to do it right? And why would a AAA studio not look at it and say, hey, maybe cramming microtransactions into our game isn't a good look? 
when Mass Effect 4 comes out, I don't want to see a $20 Liara skin. And I hope that its performance is tested across all platforms before release. Am I in the wrong for not wanting microtransactions and a stable video game at launch? Credit where credit's due now. There have been some really good examples of AAA games like the Dead Space remake and the Resident Evil 4 remake come to mind, both of which have been massive successes for EA and Capcom. Vampire Survivors came along and took the internet by storm last year. Do I need to bring up Elden Ring again? But that tweet blew up in the development sphere and frankly, the pushback is just ridiculous. Developers should be looking at what Baldur's Gate 3 did and trying to replicate where they can, not jumping up to defend games that are cramming in practices that fans are getting fed up with. And make no mistake about it, these decisions impact game design. Many games are utilizing battle passes and player engagement as a metric of success. For a player, that means more grindy missions. That means more reminders to stop in the shop. It means a boring grind because keeping players engaged is a key metric. Many of the people who came out to talk about why Baldur's Gate 3 shouldn't be the new standard have since walked back those statements and I'm glad because if the industry can't take a good hard look at what's going wrong, why fans reacted the way they did to Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate 3 and then make impactful changes, we're screwed. Also, People seem to be using the fact that Larian is a big studio against them. The fact that they had a long development cycle against them. Really? Blizzard is also a huge studio with over 8,500 employees across several offices. They credited every employee at Blizzard in the release of Diablo 4. Bungie is a huge studio with over 1,552 employees across several offices. BioWare is a huge studio with over 500 employees across several offices. And Larian is also a large studio with over 400 employees across several offices. All of them have established beloved IPs with a ton of lore to pull from. All of them have a lot of money to make video games. And all of them had a long time to make anything they wanted to make. To say Baldur's Gate 3 is successful because it's aligned with Dungeons and Dragons is insanity. You think 800,000 Steam players are playing a game called Baldur's Gate 3 because of Dungeons and Dragons? No, it's clearly gone far beyond that audience. I don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons. I didn't know this game had anything to do with Dungeons and Dragons. And you know why I'm playing it? Because I like good games with a heavy focus on storytelling and bears. But anyway, it wasn't all doom and gloom from the development side. Thank you, Juno Bleas, formerly a riot, for jumping in and echoing exactly what I'm saying here. Her quote tweet reads, I can't disagree with this one more. Whenever a game disrupts the industry and delights players beyond expectations, it absolutely raise industry and genre standards regardless of why and how. We should look at the Larian success story and ask ourselves, how are we going to make our games better and create the next games that shake up the industry? Players should and must always expect more from us, never less. Thank you. I implore AAA devs to look at these games that are being celebrated and look at your pipeline to see why the consumer is getting frustrated about the experience I outline in this video. And obviously try and make an improvement because telling me how hard it is when you're breaking profit and revenue records isn't a super compelling argument from the customer's perspective. Is Baldur's Gate 3 an outlier? Yes, but I for one wish it could become the standard and being told to shut up because I don't know game design doesn't feel super constructive, but hey, I'm just some idiot on the internet who doesn't know anything about game design. I guess I'll just go buy my horse armor and call it a day. Enjoy your $20 on top of your $100 for the collector's edition on top of your $15 for the battle pass. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below because I get why you're frustrated and it's really frustrating to see people not saying, hey, maybe we could learn a thing or two from Larian. I'm enduring Baldur's Gate 3, and I hope game development continues to grow from where it is today. I hope you do too. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And for more on all things gaming, keep it right here on IGN.